Hello and welcome to this ONGR mod reel video about the Byfield Jaguar V12. This is video 139 in our series of XK videos and this video is a bit of a, a related video but it isn't strictly XK8, XKR, X100 related but it is a very close relations and I really um, struck a chord with my interest so I wanted to make a quick video about it. I split this video up into four parts. First of all, we're going to have a look at the Jaguar V12 in all its detail. Secondly, we'll look at the other Byfield cars. Um, section three, then the Byfield story, the, uh, the story behind the guy who actually built this, these cars and other cars. And section four, then there's actually uh, a Byfield ABC interview, an interview by uh, Australia Broadcasting Corporation, which is uh, quite interesting. So I've added that on a bit. It's a bit of a bonus. If you're interested in this video, your chances are you're interested in Jaguars. I've uh, got this uh, YouTube channel, ONDR module. It's dedicated to anything XK8, XKR, X100 related, but anything Jaguar as well. Please press the thumbs up if you like the video as if we're going along. So section one, the Jaguar V12, which is formerly called the XJS HE V12. Um, Way down under in Australia, um, just outside of Perth, uh, there's a guy who resides there called Cliff Byfield. Um, and in the motor, local motor museum are quite a few of his cars. Um, the motor museum in question is the Motor Museum of Western Australia.com.au. And in there, you'll see this wonderful bright yellow Jaguar Special. It was built in uh, 2003, and if you have a quick look at the explanation card on the exhibit, 2003 Byfield Jaguar V12 HE. This magnificent Byfield Jaguar has been designed and hand-built by a retired engineer. The space frame chassis was constructed to accept mechanical compo components from an XJS V12 Jaguar, as were the dashboard instruments, etc. The mid-range engine layout is very reminiscent of the XJ220. Over a period of four years, the car was built in a backyard open-air workshop in Bayswater by master craftsman Cliff Byfield. The space frame chassis is clothed, clothed in hand-formed aluminium with handmade rear bumper mirrors and air inlets. Cliff was amazing. 30, sorry, Cliff was was an amazing 82 years old when he completed this car in 2003. So Cliff now is uh, is roughly 97 and he's built this car and many others. Now the influences for this car obviously he's used uh, an old Jaguar XJS HE V12 and lots of its components. The Jaguar, the main beating heart of this car then is the V12 engine. Now, just out of reference, this uh, this engine produces a maximum power of 277 p PS, or basically 273 brake bra horsepower at uh, 5,250 RPM, with a maximum torque of 104 newton meters at 2,800 RPM, or 297 pound foot of torque. Mm. The power is transmitted to the road by rear wheel drive and through a three-speed automatic. Uh, obviously, it, it spoke about the influences, so he's taken this fr uh, basically front engine layout and made it into a mid engine as per the uh, XJ220, which must have been out just about the time Cliff decided to build this car. There's lots of styling cues with this car and Cliff's car with the air intakes and the rear windows and the front end. Uh, he's carried for over, including uh, very similar wheels. Obviously, at the time, is our favourite, the XK8, XKR, X100, and you can see styling cues from that carried forward into Cliff's car too. So there you go, and he built, finished up building this car, the Jaguar XJS HEV12. Very, very nice looking. You can see the mouth is reminiscent of uh, E types and the XK8. Uh, as are the uh, front headlamps. It's using XJ Sports alloy wheels 
And you can see the rear intakes, even behind the back window there, are very reminiscent of the XJ220. So lots of styling influences, all Jaguar related in this car. As it was described, it was built from a space frame chassis. And you can see uh, an early build photograph here with all the construction underneath the body skin. Here's another photo as well. You can see the front radiator tilted to allow a good uh, airflow underneath the vehicle. And he actually clothed it. I mean, when you first look at this car, you may think, oh, it's another plastic uh, GRP special, basically fiberglass bodied. But no, this is aluminium hand-beaten aluminium car wow what a quality vehicle as i say he squeezed this jaguar v12 into the middle of it behind the, the front seats and in front of a small boot compartment is this big xjs v12 engine it's it's fed with air through side scoops with nice handmade um, stainless steel grills and you can see the quality of the craftsmanship here, just in the details here of the uh, rear lights um, surrounded by the chrome trim. And the very petite exhaust, a bit reminiscent of the the uh, the Tota, I think it's S, uh, the Tota 2000. Little, very subtle exhaust pipes there. You can see here it's actually uh, got design influences from what looks like uh, a four, the 4 GT, the way the roof panels pop up to ease entry and exit. Obviously the guy was 80-odd 80, 80 years old at the time, so it's he's built it as practically as he can. The interior is just as nice as the exterior, so let's go and take a look. Look at the quality of this craftsmanship. He's, he's got lots of leather and wood. It's got a very interesting placement of the clock it looks like as well um albeit uh the xjs would have had an automatic gearbox he's got a manual gearbox on this you can see he's got uh, what looks like a five speed box with a dog leg reverse on there but it's very difficult to see for this photograph you can see very very nice quality interior again a bit of a closer heads up all the clocks look very similar to those um, uh, who are familiar with uh, Jaguar XJS's. Lovely, lovely place to be. The rear of the car, he has actually got a small boot in the back there. You can see a, a small boot space, so there is some practicality, albeit for a mid-engine V12 sports car. So there you go, it's residing in the museum and what a fine piece of craftsmanship it is. The Byfield Jaguar XJS HE V12. Okay, so let's move on then to other Byfield's cars or Cliff's other creations. So as I said, Cliff Byfield is hand built approximately 15 cars, we believe, or a minimum of 15. So we've trolled the internet and we try to pick out all the ones we could. So let's see what we could find. In 1950, there was a Citroen. He first worked on, we believe. Then in 1955, there was this Citroen Super 60. Lots of photographs of this, albeit from 1950s. Very strange looking car. Then there was the 1958 Repco Holden couple of pictures of this one obviously eventually became red I think it's quite a famous car this down under in the in uh, Australian racing then in 1960 the Holden Roaster a couple of pictures of this one so we're up to five cars now I believe this car was actually written off and it's no longer with us but uh, I'm not 100% sure in 1987, there was this Ford Leyland Clubman, which is very reminiscent of Lotus 7 cars and uh, looks very kit carish of the time. Uh, there is actually a video already on YouTube of this car when it was at a car show 
with its current owner and there'll be a link in the channel in the description to get a look at that video. Then in 2003 there was the Jaguar XJSH EV12 we've already spoke about. Um, there was one car seems to be attributed to Cliff was a Maybach 4 Corvette and it seems like a lot of his cars or car building was focused on racing so don't think these cars were just basically works of art they were actually practical race machines he's got a lot of experience of building race cars in Australia and this was just one of them I believe 2012 there's the Jaguar Mark V or the Green Machine one of his more favorite cars That's their standard straight six engine, I believe. The green machine. Then in 2016, there was his Riley. Very, very sort of uh, classic styled machine. You can see the craftsmanship, amazing, absolutely amazing. All that chrome, lovely, lovely quality cars. So there you go, we got up to 10. So there's at least five missing, plus other cars, maybe that is built as well. So what actually were the others? If you know, please let us know on the channel. Send us photographs or descriptions. We'd, be, we'd love to know. And if there were actually competition race cars, if you've got photographs of those, we'd love to hear from you. Section three, then, the Byfield story. This is basically a story of Cliff Byfield. It was written by John Melberg, and it was actually uh, published on um, Rare Components Cars uh, blogspot.com uh, previously. I'm just going to read out uh, uh, John's words with some photographs I've put together for, to make it a bit more interesting. In Western Australia there resides a legendary car builder, widely known amongst Aussie car enthusiasts for creating a series of home-built, hand-fabricated road and racing cars over the course of more than 60 years, his name is Cliff Byfield, and this is a bit of his story. In the late 1930s, Mr. Byfield was an apprentice coach builder in the city of Perth, but on the onset of the Second World War, he enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force and was shipped off to the European Theatre. He was put to work as a tail gunner, flying with his crewmates in Lancaster bombers on missions over France and Germany. He had over 30 sorties to his credit. After concluding his military service, he returned to Perth and after some course studies in architecture, resumed, his, resumed and completed his coach building apprenticeship. It wasn't long before he started his own workshop specialising in building one-off truck cabs that employed over 15 people. While pound and beating and metal shaping have been his primary vocation, he has always also had a talented woodworker, designing and constructing furniture as well as making musical instruments, including a harp. All the while he was engaged in building custom cars, in retirement he took the opportunity to teach manual arts, the Australian equivalent of shop class, to high school students and engaging them in his car building hobby as well. The product of that endeavour was a Lotus 7 inspired roaster called the Ford Leyland Clubman in reference to its mechanical donors and its track day pretensions. In all, Cliff Byford has built 15 handcrafted cars almost single handedly, welding up frames, building chassis, designing bodies, crafting books, hammering and shaping bodies, and even learning sewing skills to do the custom upholstery of each of them. Most of these required around two years of work from concept to completion. The first of his cars was called the Byfeld Citroen, a one-off car designed and built in Perth during the 1950s. It was a two-door two coupe based on a damaged traction Avant. It was sadly destroyed in an accident. Among his most famous works was the Byfield Holden Sports, sometimes refer referred to as the Repco Holden. This car still exists and racing in Western Australia among its peers in a vintage racing circuit. It was built in the early 60s and used a, used a Holden grey motor inline six cylinder with a Repco crossflow head, hence its nickname. A road going version of the car was also built and was referred to as the Byfield Holden. 
It was a handsome design with a vein of Italian in the vein of Italian contemporaries that featured creature comforts such as a convertible top, which the race had never, which the race had lacked. As fate would have it, the road car was also raced by a fellow named Stand Stasvich, but got pranked. And as they say down under, this was never repaired. One of Cliff's most, ambition most ambitious creations was a mid-engine V12 called the Byfield XGS V12 HE. Its construction is based on a steel box section backbone chassis of entirely original design. Byfield's attention to detail is abundantly evident in the ex execution of various catches, hinges and minutiae that are easily overlooked by enthusiasts and other builders alike. It designs for the car's hidden door release mechanism is a perfect example. Externally there are two small panels, one on top, one, the top one is spring loaded and is operated by pushing it in, then pulling it down on the accompanying panel beneath it. As a result of this action, the seat rises up to meet its occupants, lowering once inside. Such details made an already stunning vehicle into something truly extraordinary. The car made new, numerous public appearances to great acclaim and even won the top prize at Perth's annual Hot Rod Street Machine Show. He completed his most recent, possibly final project at the age of 94. This car is referred to as the Byfield Riley. It is a convertible in a pre-war style, finished in metallic burgundy colour with fine wood and leather trim inside, with mechanicals from a salvage Riley that, as Cliff said, Followed him, home, followed him home one day. Classic. A number of his creations have been donated to the Motor Museum of Western Australia in Perth. Others reside with collectors across the country. Each is a gem the test, and testament, and a testament to the drive, ambition, and prodigious talents of the man. When Cliff Byfall was a young boy growing up in Northam in the 1930s, his grandfather gave him some advice, which is followed all his life. Every day before you go to sleep, stop and consider, what have you learned today? What have you done today? Has the day been productive? Are you satisfied with your effort? If you can't answer those with an affirmative, then your day, your day has been wasted. Cool, he's got a tough grandfather. It is an advice, it is advice that a 96 year old always heeded. To this, to this author, those seem to sure those sure seem like good words to live by, and tough. It's a tough act to follow. That. So section four then. Um, Cliff Byfall actually did an interview with ABC, Australia, Australia's broadcasting company, um, Alex Heyman in May uh, 2016, and this is the extract or the uh, summary of the article. 92-year-old Cliff Byfield still on top gear after dedicating life to building classic cars in, in Perth. When Cliff Byfield was a boy growing up in Northern in the 1930s, his grandfather gave him some advice. And this is basically the same as I've just written. It's advice that the 92 year old has always heeded. His first job after leaving school was to work up for an undertaker making coffins. That didn't impress me one little bit. So. When he, when he was offered a job as an apprentice coach builder in Perth and Julie came down and signed up for the apprenticeship, he said, I learned more than one trade, glass cutting, fabric work, oxy welding, panel beating, spring making, to name a few. However, his apprenticeship was interrupted by World War II. He ended up in the Air Force and became a gunner on a Lancaster bombers flying 31 missions. When he returned to Perth, he completed his apprenticeship and found there was a serious shortage of cars in the city. And that is how he became, he came to build his first car. The first car I built came out of necessity because in those days you couldn't buy a car for love or money. He said, certainly not love anyway. <laughs> a chap I knew in the insurance game told me there was a burnt out Citroen that had a motor in reasonable condition. I got it for a song and set out building the body. It became quite a feature around the city at the time. That was just the start of what would become a lifelong pastime, building cars almost from the ground up and fabricating many of the parts himself. 
Mr. Byfield estimated they'd built around 15 cars and restored many, many others. He became particularly well known in the 1950s for a, rep a Repco Holden he created, which became one of the best known race cars in the state. His pride and joy is a car called the Green Machine, a heritage Jaguar built by hand himself, apart from the engine. It's the one I get the most pleasure out of, he said. His latest project is a plum-coloured 1930-style sports car. It's an old Riley that followed me home one day, sat outside the gate looking very forlorn. It was just like a dog that follows you home, he said. I couldn't resist it, and so I bought it with the idea of restoring it. But when I opened the doors to examine it, the thing literally imploded, so I took the body off right down to the chassis. That has meant designing and building everything, the dashboard, the headlights, the panels himself. It's nearly finished, and I'm quite pleased with the way it's turned out, he said. Mr. Byfield said there was huge satisfaction in finishing a car after years of work, but in reality, the work is never really over. You can always find something to do with it, he said. No one ever gets, a near, per near, t gets near to a perfect car, and that is something that really rings a bell with me, because... You have your Jaguar XK or your Jaguar car and you're always just trying to titivate it and get it nearly perfect. But it's, it's like the fourth bridge. You never quite get to the end. There you go. Hopefully that's a bit of an uh, interesting video into the uh, Byfield Jaguar and the man behind it. I'd like to thank Cliff Byfield. What an amazing guy. He's still going at 97 and good luck to you, sir. What a... What a great guy! What a lot! What what, um, what superb cars you've you've made, mate! I'd like to also thank Jeff at UndiscoveredClassics.com, who um, I contacted and pointed me in the right direction. Thank you very much, Jeff. And Rare Component Cars for sharing the article with us. Thank you, John, for doing that. And ABC News for their article as well and uh, their interview with Cliff. Just to reiterate, if you do know what the other cars were. Please let us know. Uh, get in touch with the channel either through the comments or through our email. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.